video is going to do a quick highlight of some various worksheets that were part of section 5.1 for part one, working with angles. And so you, we had a practice sheet to work with coterminal angles, angles that are separated by plus or minus 360 degrees or any multiple of plus or minus 360. We're going to do some work solving some similar triangles, and then we're going to work with some word problems. So I'm just going to go through highlights of each of these various sheets. Our first one is practice with coterminal angles. And most everything that you see up top is going to be relatively straightforward. Just want you to come up, given an angle, you're then asked to come up with another angle, either positive or negative, that happens to be coterminal with this. All these angles live between negative 360 and 360 degrees. So just a simple add and subtract is always going to be safe in this case for what we're looking for. But down here, we're going to roll into some slightly different scenarios with a couple of the problems. I'm going to focus specifically on problems 13 and 14. Problem 13 is looking for, for that matter, everything in this little section is looking for an angle. Your answer needs to produce an angle that's between 0 and 360 degrees. I'm going to work with 1310 first. And I'll just have my calculator out to save ourselves a little bit of time as well. And so as I go through 1310 degrees, 1310 minus 360 brings me to an answer of 950. Not good enough. And so the term I use in something like this, and I'm going to use it pretty common. You'll see it in class every once in a while. I'm just going to say I need to keep unwinding the angle. Think about it that I've made too many revolutions, like it's a piece of string or whatever, and I need to loosen that string. In other words, let it stretch out. So I'll take away another 360 degrees. Still not good enough. 590. Unwind one more time. Track 360, 230. Negative 910. Negative 910. In this case, hey, I want to get a positive angle. I need to start adding. Add 360. 550. Do it again. <clears throat> Negative 190. Still not good enough. Do it one more time. Good enough, 170 degrees. And so really, if you think about it, it sounded like, I, if you recall, I did this three times each. I really wound up subtracting 1,080 degrees. Watch, 1310 minus three times 360. Walks me right into that 230. And the same thing would happen here. Negative 910 plus, in this case, how many times did I want? Three. 3 times 360 gives me 170. So just be comfortable when you're asked to find a coterminal angle and you're given a specific value that they want. They, in other words, in this case, the coterminal angle that I want in these problems, I want to be between 0 and 360. You might have to unwind a couple times. All right. The second worksheet that I'm going to have you work on is solving special right triangles, 30, 60, 90 as well as 45, 45, 90 triangles. And what I asked you to focus on, we talked about this in the 5.1 lecture, or you saw it on the video. Understand all the relationships. I've given you the way to work through just about any combination, no matter what part of a 45, 45, 90 triangle, whatever side length you happen to have, there are rules that'll let you build the rest. So I'm gonna do a couple of these. I'm not going to go to my calculator. I'm going to stay with what we will call exact answers for the moment. And I'm just going to pick some at random. I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle here in question number two, where my small side is six. One of the rules, if I know the short side, I always can double it to get the long side. So in this problem, six times two is 12. That's how long the hypotenuse happens to be in this problem. Just fix that up a little bit. 12. And what do I do? 6. If I know the short side to get the side opposite the 60, just take that value, multiply it by the square root of 3. 6, the square root of 3. A 45, 45, 90 triangle. 7 times the square root of 2. In those, if I know the length of the hypotenuse, the rule was divide by the square root of 2 to get the sides. 7 root 2 over 2 is nothing more than 7. And that's what happens here. 
a 45-45-90 triangle with 5 root 2 over 2 as the short side, or the, the dual side, whatever we'd like to say. What do I do? Multiply by the square root of 2. That's how much bigger, the, by a factor of the square root of 2, is how much bigger the hypotenuse is. I have 5 root 2 over 2 times root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 10. 5 times 2, excuse me, root 2 times root 2 is 2, times 5 is 10, divided by 2 equals 10 over 2, or 5. Here is a 30, 60, 90 triangle with the side opposite the 60 degree angle is 2 times the square root of 3. What do I know? To go from the short side to the long side, the 30 degree opposite side, to the 60 degree opposite side, I would multiply by the square root of 3. Well, I need to go in the opposite direction. I need to divide by the square root of 3 because I know the 60 degree side. This would be 2. Once I know the side opposite the 30, I know how big my hypotenuse is. All I have to do is double it. Let's see if we can find a couple others that might be useful for practice. Let's do this. Hypotenuse of 12. What does that tell me? Well, if the hypotenuse is 12, the side opposite the <clears throat> 30 degree should be half of that, 6. Know the short side. How do I get the side opposite the 60? Multiply by the square root of 3. Let's do just one more while I'm here. 4 times the square root of 3 for the hypotenuse in a 30, 60, 90 triangle. What can I do? Hypotenuse. To go from the hypotenuse to the short side, take it in half. Half of 4, root, uh, four times square root of 3 is nothing more than 2 times the square root of 3. If I know the length of the 30 degree opposite side. Multiply that length by the square root of 3. 2 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 to get the 60 degree side. Square root of 3 squared is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. And one more to work through. Let's go up top here. So I actually did a fair amount of these problems after I think about it. I have a hypotenuse that's 7. Remember, to get from the 45 degree side to the hypotenuse, you multiply by the square root of 2. I need to go in the opposite direction. I need to divide by the square root of 2. 7 over the square root of 2. Need to rationalize this. So what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply my top and bottom by the square root of 2 over 2. And what will I wind up with? That becomes 2. 7 the square root of 2 over 2. And that's what this other side will be as well. 7 root 2 over 2. So for the time being, as we work through these, we're going to stay with exact answers. As we move forward, we'll go to a calculator-based solution. The last piece to cover are elements of our triangle worksheet. <clears throat> we're going to work with similar triangles. We'll work with special triangles. Similar triangles. Take an advantage of how the problem is structured to build these. Here's a shadow problem. Someone generates a shadow. I'm 1.5 meters tall, and I have a shadow that's 10 meters long. The sun's sitting up here, 1.53 and 10. A statue has a shadow that is what? Four times as long. Remember, we're all creating. We all have the same angle with the sun. The sun is, as we said before, 93 million miles away. How tall? Is this statue? Well, what do I know? I know that 1.53 is to h, the ratios of the heights, is the same as what? 10 is to 40. Now, the quick way to look at it, and we'll get this as we go, but let's do it anyway. 40 times 1.53 over 10 equals h. That's what would happen after I go ahead and do all my cross multiplying. This is nothing more than 4 times 1.53, we'd come up with an answer of 6.12. <clears throat> That's how many meters we say this statue is. Another good way to think about it, you just kind of look at the two things that we built. Hey, in this triangle, what? Every length is four times as much. 
1.53 times 4, 6.12 meters. So take advantage of what the problem is giving you. Realize that you kind of are looking at the same things, just different triangles, but similar triangles. Problems 5, 6, and 7 use special triangles. And I'm going to work specifically with problem number 7. I'm going to have a ramp connected to the deck of a moving truck. Okay. So my truck may be able to sit over here. Let me just go ahead and make the connections. When I attach my ramp, it's a 1.5 meters high. And, well, again, think, how does a ramp attach? It attaches something like that. And how do long is it from the truck? We'll assume, again, that the truck is kind of sitting right over here. We said that that distance is 3 meters, how long the ramp happens to be. So there's something very interesting here. First things first, you have a right triangle. And what do you also notice? You're in a situation where your hypotenuse is twice the length of, <coughs> excuse me, twice the length of your side over here with a right triangle in place. This is telling you that you have a 30, small angle, 60, sorry that I built this triangle so small, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. What angle does the ramp make with the street? There's the street, there's the angle, the angle is 30 degrees. And then you're asked, how far is the loading end of the ramp from the back of the truck? Well, that's where the ramp is starting, correct? So we're just being asked, how long is this distance? I'm going to use the letter D for a moment for this distance. Well, the distance is nothing more than what? It's the side opposite the 60 degree angle in a 30, 60, 90 triangle. What do I know? If I know the 30 degree side, multiply by the square root of 3. And I have, in this case, we won't go to the calculator, but you could. But for the moment, that's a perfect exact answer for a problem like this. All right. One last problem to work through, another similar triangle problem. You want to determine the height of a cell tower. So I'll just go ahead. There's my cell tower. I'll do something like that just to imply that there's something at the top of it. <clears throat> Someone takes a six-foot pole. It's that tall is what they say. And they notice that it's what? It winds up being one foot away from me in a sitting position. Our line of sights, when I look through here, exact same line of sight to the top of that cell tower. And so what is this telling me? Well, let's think. I have a couple similar triangles. This six-foot pole is sitting one foot away from my head. And make note, my head happens to be two feet above the ground. I also know that what? <clears throat> my distance from this pole to the cell tower is 20.5 feet. And if I think about it, I actually have similar triangles that are structured here. But it's going to be something a little bit different <clears throat> to notice in this. I'm going to build my second triangle. It's going to live just like what I do here in green. <clears throat> One thing to note, these triangles that I'm looking at are two feet above the ground. So I'm going to have to factor that in when I work my way through these two special triangles. So take a look. I do have similar triangles. I have this little triangle right here. And by the way, if I'm two feet tall, this triangle, that green thing, that little triangle is four feet tall. So I'll go ahead and just build another one over here, four and one. And I have all the angles in this other triangle. <clears throat> This will be, I'll just go ahead and mark it in red, or just kind of highlight it in red. And what do I know is true in this triangle? Well, I know that this distance, 1 feet plus 20.5 feet, is 
And there's the little value of h that I'm looking at. Remember, two feet off the ground. So once I get h to get the real height of the cell tower, remember, the triangles that I built live two, cent, two <clears throat> feet above the ground. What do I have here? I have 4 is to h <clears throat> as 1 is to 21.5. Please excuse me here. 21.5 is how long I should have had the second triangle. It runs all the way there. Apologize for that. So if I do some quick cross multiplication, <clears throat> 4 times 21.5 <clears throat> is going to produce an answer of 86. H equals, 1 times H equals 4 times 21.5. H equals 26. And the cell tower height, remember, my H, that little triangle, lives 2 feet above the ground. Cell tower overall height is equal to 86 plus 2 equals 88 feet. Sorry for my hands in the way. So again, take advantage of what these problems are giving you. There's hints sometimes here. Just realize again, line of sights, both of them, as soon as you stare up from your sitting position two feet above the ground, you're going to see the tip of the cell tower, tower right through the tip of this pole. It was a six-foot pole. You're two feet up, so you're only looking at, so to speak, this little triangle that you built only has a height of four because it's in line with your eyes. You're not lying flat on the ground. You're sitting, you're two feet above the ground already, so your vantage point is a little bit different. Building these similar triangles, a triangle four feet pole, one foot distance away with your line of sight. Second triangle, what do you know? It's 20.5 feet from the pole, one more foot away from you, the length of that second triangle, the one made with the pole on your head, all the way to the building is going to be 21.5. H is to 4 as 21.5 is to 1. And there's the basics that we sit here. Cross multiplication, get our value for our H in that second similar triangle, add to 88 feet for our building height. So be comfortable with all these concepts that we work here. Let the similar triangles help you. When you get the fortune of having a special triangle, take advantage of it. Knowing the relationships amongst the sides, everything that we did with those 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90 triangles, and this will put you in good shape as we start this unit.